Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm going to show you a few different ways to farm dragons soon as we've got this frenzy event going on. I'm going to start my main account, which means I'm going to start by trying to show you fast ways to farm dragon. Uh, and I'm going to show you an, an efficient way to farm dragon. And then I'm going to show you my free-to-play team, just so you kind of get an idea of the stats I'm using to farm dragon 20 on the free-to-play, 90, uh, 90 odd days in. But let's start on the main. So I want to show you a Poison Exploder speed team, a Seer speed team, and I want to show you an efficient way to solo farm Dragon 25. Uh, I'm going to use Eurodrim, but you could use Bad L or someone like uh, Rished Off the Bold. There might be a few others, to be honest, but they're the three which kind of spring to mind. Um, so let's start with my main team. Let's start with the team that I use day in, day out, and... Um, it's consistent. It's it's also a poison exploder team, which means that I make use of some champions that perhaps would just sit in the vault otherwise. I do have my seer speed tune to do other stuff, and I don't want to kind of mess around with it too much. So I use this team here. Uh Xavier being the main point of explosion um and, and kind of wave killing. She basically does the job of a seer. Yeah. Uh, and then everyone else is kind of setting it up. So the idea with this team, I do have it on a team setup because I need Kaimar to use something other than his reset at the start of the run and I need him to be the fastest on my team okay I then need everyone else to go before Xavier goes so we kind of drop defense and weaken with Draco poisons go up with Bad L poisons go up with Taurus Xavier wipes it off we do the same we get to Dragon uh, I'll show you in in action and um honestly I kind of would like my Xavier to be dead by the time I the dragon starts hitting me, but uh, I can't really get a weak enough because my great hall's just kind of boosting her stats. But you see, we absolutely crucify wave one. We reset with Kaimar. It's very similar to the sort of stats you, uh, the sort of runs you will see with Seer. Honestly, um, you see that Draco didn't use an ability there because I speed my Xavier up to overtake Draco in that second hit. We then get a load of poisons out there. Poison then does the damage to the actual dragon. I want the dragon to kill my Xavier with a hit, but he never does because he then goes into this kind of purple uh, mode. Then my Xavier's going to clean off um, the poisons and it kind of slows me down a touch. But um, considering we're on, on Dragon 25 here, it's not a bad little run. We get a reset, so we're going to do all of this shenanigans again. At this point, I've built my, my bad L just so that he could solo the run if we wanted him to, just so that there's no chance that this is going to be a failed run. Because sometimes some of these other ones can die in between. Um, but we generally get a decent kind of between 1 minute 10 or so um, up to about 1 minute 45, depending on RNG, depending on who's dead uh, as we go. But this is all about now just laying more poison and then the poison doing the damage. If Xavi was dead, the dragon would straight up just die quicker. Simple as that. We get another reset coming away, so she's going to try and blow it all up again. She only does 10% maximum damage, which is why it would be faster if she was dead. Because actually the, the poison explosion by itself does a lot more damage than that. There's enough to kill it now already. 1 minute 40. As I say, it kind of runs between 110 and 140, depending on what's going on. Um, interestingly, this Taurus could just be a level 40, level 1 even Taurus. Um, Bad L could be another poisoner, like another Taurus style champ. Um, Draco is in there as a decreased defense and weakens kind of important for level 25 stuff but again for earlier level stuff you don't need to have draco or even a decreased defense champion if you're doing like level 20 you could just run xavier blowing stuff up so some of these are interchangeable kaimar could be a renegade but if renegade is going to be your reset champion then she only resets for two turns cooldown not a full cooldown of all abilities so it would just slightly change it up but this could definitely be renegade as well so this is a team i run on stage 25 i fight 25 because i want more chances of legendary pieces in speed gear okay um 24 is the more efficient place to farm yeah but you could still come in um Xavier would be ineffective on 24 but lnr would do exactly the same job that Xavier's is doing here so you could use lnr to do that um, and come in on 24 and do this. This exact same team I used to run with the same speeds on level 20 before they opened up 20 to 25. So 
Let me just quickly show you the builds of this one before we move on to another one. So my Zavia, not in any kind of like savage or anything crazy gear. She's she's in good gear, but she's not in like mental gear. Um, I've just built a like full attack, uh, ideally 100% crit rate, but it's not the end of the world, and 240 crit damage. That's really just so that she hits hard, okay? She doesn't need all of these stats. It, she actually will do her poison explosion with like zero stats. You could run a level one and she would do the same level of damage on a poison explosion. And, and she, she doesn't need any of these stats, honestly. I could run a level one, she'd do the same job. Uh, maybe I should because then she'd die faster. Yeah. Um, so that's my Xavier. My Kaimar is just quicker than everyone else. So my Kaimar is fast. If you build him 100% crit, he will land a poison every time he hits, as long as he doesn't get a weak hit. So that's all I care about, really, is speed and his accuracy for... when well, this is build is actually for Arena, but I use him for this same team as well. Um, my Draco... Which one is it? Which one is it? It is this one. So my Draco is just built to land his poisons and built to be slower than the other champs in the team. So he's at 214 speed. I built with some damage just so that he does pr uh, prod away with a bit of damage, but that's his main role is to be at the right speed to do the work. Um, and then we've got the um, Taurus. Is Taurus out? Yes. So Taurus just built to be fast um, and have enough accuracy to do his job. And my bad L is, again, it's just about speeds really. I've built it so that Xavier overtakes a couple of these champs. Is bad L in the mix here? Let's be in the vault. My bad L is built to kind of come in between. I do have him in stalwart gear, so that, as I say, he can solo dragon if he needs to. 237 speed, 244 accuracy. I could probably do with a bit more resistance to make him kind of fully solo proof, but that's the team that I've been running as, as my kind of day-to-day -day team. Now, honestly, you, you kind of run the same style of team with Seer. So the idea is you explode all of the waves using Seer, um, but, the way you explode them is without, instead of using poisons to do all the damage, you use buffs and buff strips. So let me run a Seer team now. And what's a bit sad to me <laughs> is that this team is just straight better. So using Seer again is just the best way to clear waves, which means you get to your boss quickest and therefore you blow it up fastest. So this team is just straight up better. Uh, it's also really good for 24. So if you're doing stage 24, this is straight up the better build to do. But same sort of idea. Drop defense and weaken. Poison's up. We've got a shield um, set on this Draco. So he's given us a buff to rip off. We get double buffs to rip off from uh, Bad L. Seer rips them off. Septimus for the waves is in there for clean up. Yeah, he's like that. Gets his tissues out. It just kind of cleans up anyone that we don't nuke. And then uh, when we get to the boss, he's still strong, actually, to do the kind of 10% um, hit on the boss. And yeah, still one of the strongest. See that? Bam, clean up. Got him down just because I don't have quite enough damage there. Um, or because maybe I didn't land like a decreased defense like this, this little chappy here. Still up. Not anymore. Septimus slays him down. So that's kind of allowing for the 3% chance to not lay your debuffs. Um, which you get from every, every champion apart from Ghostborn. So that's why he's in the mix. Um, but you could have, you know, just anyone that's going to kind of do that job. Septimus is not... The important champions here series the buffs are and uh poisons are when you get to this stage so the good thing about here is you haven't got xavier wiping off all of the poisons which are doing your damage um so straight up you get all that chunky poison damage and we just do it quicker this might even be my quickest ever time looking at this it's gonna be close to it um so you can just see as long as you've got a little bit of survivability in your champs then you just slay this dragon so damn quick minute odd um, not far off a minute. And basically the next time the dragon gets a turn is dead. So this is like the more efficient team, but it does mean that you need to kind of utilize your seer in another spot. So yeah, we've had it like a minute. And seer's doing all the work. So for this squad, I've literally, I've not changed the bad L um, setup from before. So he's still looking the same. I got my second Draco in a shield set here. Any of the champions in your team could be in the shield set. So this Draco doesn't need to be as fast as this, just got to be quick enough so that Seer doesn't outrun him. 250-odd speed here. 
uh, my Kaimar, same Kaimar, same build. But again, doesn't need to be as fast as this, just got to be faster than the rest of your team. And in setup, you have to make sure that he doesn't do his reset at the start. Um, my Septimus build is the same build I've had for forever, just in like a spider kind of slaying build. So he has got crazy hard hitting gear. Doesn't need to be as hard hitting as this. He still would have done the job without them. And then my Seer is in Savage gear. That's quite important. So I don't have that many buffs to rip off. If you apply more buffs to your team, you need less strong gear. But Savage gear does help. And Helm Smasher helps as well to get the job done. Enough accuracy to do the job. Couple of hundred odd speed. 100% crit rate. And then as much crit damage as you can get. Do not worry about attack. Notice here I'm in an HP chest, not an attack chest. I don't need it. Um, and that is team two. So team three, we're going to build right now. Um, and I'm going to throw it into the optimizer because we've got a new feature in the optimizer which helps for this type of build. So I'm going to build out Eurodrim to be a solo farmer. Okay. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for regen set so that he can regenerate his health, obviously. And then we're looking for pretty fast, good resistance and good accuracy. So maybe even a touch more resistance. I basically need to resist all the stuff the dragon's doing to me whilst playing my poisons. And we've added in this new section on the optimizer, on the GPU optimizer, which is called EHP. It's basically, that stands for like effective health points. And what it will do for me is once I've hit these base stats that I'm asking for, it will give me as much survivability as possible. So we're going to throw that in. This is a hard build to pull out, so it's going to take a little while. But you see here, because I'm asking for the EHP, it's building me a build, not with all the crit rate, crit damage and stuff. It's building me high health and high defense. Um, and if we go over to uh, stats, you can just kind of see the after appearance will kind of pop up uh, and all that type of stuff. But yeah, basically, it's not throwing my damage up. If I go to steals, my damage is not going up tons. All of my damage is coming from poisons with Eurodrim. So we have a look at where it's coming from. We're going to steal this stuff, put it on him, and then we're going to get him running solo. Okay, here he is in all his glory. Accuracy set alongside regen. The accuracy gear is just pu obviously pumping up my accuracy number. And then, I mean, this is an insane piece. I'm overstatted here, but it is a stat-hungry build. But I'm looking for the speed rolls, the accuracy rolls, speed and accuracy. Same again. HP chest, uh, resistance here resistance here a resistance banner so you either find your resistance in your gear or you find your resistance in your accessories um resistance and accuracy on a piece yeah so it's it's a strong build hard to do but you become very efficient if you do it because you can throw food into your farm now what i've done here with masteries is i've got masteries which basically help to keep him alive for as long as possible so we've got a little bit of offensive mastery you have to have well, you don't have to, but it helps you. Whirlwind of Death, boost your speed as you kill stuff. Yes, this is a really helpful mastery here. Wrath of the Slain uh, does more damage as your team die. Your team are going to be dead. Yeah, you've also got this one down here. Spirit Haste, more speed when people are dead. Uh, Arcane Celerity, more speed as, um, as debuffs expire. I guess you probably could... Maybe you could ignore Life Drinker and come over here and go Rapid Response and get more turn meter as your heals drop off as well. I'm not sure what's better out of those two. Um, and then we've got Oppressor, so more turn meter as you've got um, debuffs out on the enemies. So he comes into the team um, and pretty much becomes the most bonkers champion in the game. You could do it with, let's get rid of all these, um, as I say, with Bad L or with... Rished off the bold, and there may be others as well, but feels like he's as, as efficient as I've seen because he's also got this speed aura. He's just kind of got stats ready to go. You fill the rest of it with food. You hit start. Uh, I'm going to thank Soundstripe, who are my uh, channel sponsor. Um, <clears throat> we're going to throw some tunes on, which are from Soundstripe. Soundstripe basically helped me with my streaming because I get royalty free music um, that I'm able to play on my streams, able to play in uh, my videos like this um, and you can also get involved if you want to with 15% off with my hell hades discount down below in the pinned comments um, but i'm gonna let this one play through and you can enjoy eurodrim in all his glory mm -hmm. 
So I guess, look, quite honestly, bonkers, right? So it's going to take us, what, the best part of two and a half minutes to farm level 25 at the same point. We're farming, obviously, a gear item. We're farming levels for food. And if you don't have, like, infinite energy for this type of event, but you want to run it, then at least get yourself some champion training points and leveling going at the same time. Because we do have a champion training event running right now. And you're going to get yourself some extra rewards whilst you're doing it. Some extra chance to kind of gain rewards here, which you might not have got otherwise. Um, okay, so we're going to flick onto the free to play account now and just kind of show you how I farm stage 20 and the team I use for that. Now, I don't have infinite energy on my free to play, but I do use on both my free to play and my main, I use blue stacks to run it right the way through because I can just set up a macro that requires replays so basically i go in here i press my macro i've recorded my mouse hitting replay 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 um and i do that let me just check my settings here i do it every minute okay so every one minute it'll hit the replay button for me it means i can go and do other stuff on my accounts and oh, sorry on my pc and not have to sit there watching it play out constantly over and over again but on my free to play i'm basically hard pushing my best champions into the content so unlike what i've just shown you with my kind of main account where i can do pretty much whatever i want my free to play i don't have the seer i don't have the poison explosions i don't have euro gear uh, euro grim and honestly i wouldn't have the gear to make that stuff work anyway so my main rules of play here are an aoe drop defense champion who isn't um and in fact in this case he's the, the worst affinity for it but he's still my strongest champion in the mix ninja does a ton of damage when you get to the dragon and he also freezes up the waves which helps you there um venomage for me is just a poisoner and a decrease attack champion and kale is in there for aoe nukage and um and poison and then geomancer is in here because he does a little bit of aoe damage but he also puts weaken out on the boss plus when the boss hits everyone he retaliates but honestly you know i could throw any of my 60s into this team and i think i'd make it work you know, Apothecary coming in instead of Deacon could do the job absolutely fine. Um, so don't feel like, oh, yeah, but it's just because of your champions. It's not. It's probably more because they've all got masteries. They've all got lifesteal gear. They're all geared um, well. And they've all got a decent amount of speed. So I'll show you their gear and everything after the run. But it's, I've never, I don't think it's ever lost a run. So 100% um, success rate is really important. Even though Deacon's the wrong affinity, sometimes he'll land all of these hits. Sometimes he'll land, you know, three or something, decreased defenses. We've got poison coming into the mix from Venomage, which is nice. So that gives us a bit of damage. 
The AoE freeze gives me my control so that I'm not taking loads of hits early on. Think about it, I've got no healer in the team, but they're all in life still gear. And then really they just kind of cruise their way through blowing stuff up. I've not tried to push it past level 20 because I don't feel like I really gained the benefit of doing it. I'm not going to get to 25 yet. And the runs would take forever. As soon as you go past 20, unless you've got one of these Seer or Poison Exploder type combos, honestly, the runs just take so long and I'm not up for that. So, Nuked Wave 1, no problem. Going to get round to the, the abilities for Wave 2. Exactly the same thing. We're freezing, we're controlling, we've got decreased defense out there, we've got nukes coming in. Nobody here is built to nuke. Everyone's just built pretty much for clan boss builds. Yeah, so it's. It's a good amount of defense, it's a good amount of health, a good amount of speed and accuracy. My Nuka is the wrong affinity for this um, level, so he's just not in the team. Probably would be if I could, if I had a Nuka that was the right affinity. I could also change my Kale up to, to turn him into a damage dealer if he wasn't in my clan boss setup. But you see, we get to the, the main boss at 130 odd, and honestly, we've been in no danger. I don't even know if we've taken a single hit. I can't, I, I don't think we have. But we take very few hits with this style of team. Mainly because Ninja, honestly. Ninja does such a lot of work with that AoE freeze. And that's a big reason as to why I booked him out. And then we get to the Dragon here. Same sort of thing. Drop defense if it lands, which it did. I get a Weaken from Geo and a Burn, which is kind of cool. Poison's here. Um, we've got that Triple Burn from Ninja, which just does so much work. And then my Venom Age will put things like Decrease Attack on if we need it. And additional poisons. So this is going to be poisons. Next turn round should put decrease attack if there's a space. But really, I'm under no threat. There's not much threat. There's a decrease attack, which makes it even easier. Everybody's got their life steal gear running. Albeit you don't heal tons and tons. Um, but everyone's got War Master and yeah, just kind of slaying the dragon in between two and three minutes all the time. And this will now be running as a macro for me for the rest of the day until I run out of energy. I'm not going to burn all of my gems and stuff because I still want my gems for a future fusion or whatever. So I will just make sure that I, I get things like the um, advanced quests done for the day so that I get capped off on um, energy possibilities. And I'll do all of that stuff just so I get as much energy out of the day as I can. I'll go to... Places like the bazaar and buy the energy. I will get as much as I can out of this game on the free to play. Um, I'll show you my builds and stuff quick. To ninja, life steal build, 197 speed, 230 accuracy are the main stats I'm worried about. War master procs coming in. Geo, giant slayer procs, but pretty much the same style of mastery setup. Life steal gear again, 190 speed, 170 accuracy. Accuracy is a little bit low for stage 20, to be honest, but. Uh, it's fine for what I'm doing right now. Deacon, life still build, 212 speed, 195 accuracy, similar sort of mastery setup. Similar masteries here on the Kale. Same sort of build again, 211 accuracy, 180 speed, a little bit slower. Um, and then Venomage doesn't have a banner, so I've got more perception gear on her. But 184 speed, 196 accuracy to land her stuff. And similar masteries again. So there you go guys, four ways to farm dragon depending on what stage of the game you're at. Hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.